Creator, the love at our beginning and without end, in our midst and with us. Welcome to this time and this place of worship. As Reverend Nicole Yusens, it is a delight to be with you here today as we mark Palm Sunday and we move immediately into a reading of the Passion Story. This is uh, a service of barely contained chaos from this, uh, from this person's perspective anyway. And so I welcome you into, into all that it shall become. We begin in the Green Book of Alternative Services with the Liturgy of the Palms that begins on page 297. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. On this day, our Lord Jesus Christ entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph. The people welcomed him with palms and shouts of praise, but the path before him led to self-giving, suffering, and death. Today we greet him as our king, although we know his crown is thorns and his throne a cross. We follow him this week from the glory of the palms to the glory of the resurrection by way of the dark road of suffering and death. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection and new life. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy into the celebration of these mighty acts, whereby you give us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you, if you've received palm crosses, to hold them aloft for a word of blessing. So for these palms, and for those that decorate the altar, as well as the local branches taken down as the palms were in that ancient story that also decorate this church, we offer words of blessing. The Lord be with you. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Hebrews acclaim Jesus as Messiah and King with palm branches in their hands, crying, Hosanna in the highest. May we also, carrying these emblems, Go forth to meet Christ and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we will process with the palms. All you need in your hands for the procession are those palms. The choir will lead us in the song. It's a, it's a repeat after me song. And so uh, part of the choir will offer a refrain and then you may join in with the rest of the choir as you catch on to the lyrics. And our procession will follow inside the building just through this uh, door and then around into, back into the space. And when you return to your pew, you're welcome to be seated. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, Amen.
crucified and yet entered into glory. May we, walking in the way of the cross, find it is for us the way of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. scriptures, to read them over again, familiar as they might be, 
And I want to share with you that one of the refrains that has come up again and again in those discussions and again here on Sunday morning is, I never noticed that before. Even in these familiar stories of Jesus' miracles, his healings, his being amongst the people, and now his final week of life, that phrase rings out, I never noticed that before. So by way of example, today, one of the never noticed before details was here in Matthew's account, when the disciples go and collect not only a donkey, but a donkey and the colt of a donkey. Two animals go with Jesus down the streets of Jerusalem in this account. Well, I'd never noticed that before. I'd never seen that appear in a painting of this Palm Sunday. And so in our midweek discussion, we talked about that detail, and it led us to a deeper understanding of the Gospel writer Matthew as a storyteller. Part of his craft is to take phrases already familiar to the people and to put them into the story that was unfolding in his own time. So that quotation about your king riding in on a donkey and the colt of a donkey, Matthew borrows those words from a trusted prophet of old, the prophet Zechariah, as if to say the story that is unfolding here in this moment is also an ancient story and is also a future story. <coughs> So we are about to plunge into a longer reading of the passion story, told in many voices, told with much emotion, told through those scenes that will take us from the highs to the lows. It's an exercise for us in listening one more time, perhaps in noticing those things we had never noticed before. Let this be an opportunity for you, not to hear the familiar, but to feel the disorientation that is always and freshly in this story of Holy Week. Perhaps you'd like to allow yourself to move alongside each character in the story and to notice where you see yourself reflected where you see your world today reflected, even in these ancient worlds, even, even to, to imagine that this story is right now unfolding anew. It's bound to be disorienting in its pain and in the distress of hearing the words of the passion story, especially coming as they do so quickly on the heels of this joyous celebration of a palm parade. But make space within yourself to hear this story. May the disorientation of today prepare you for the further disorientation of delight that will come upon us at Easter. As we prepare to hear the Passion story, I invite you to sing together hymn number 182, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty.
Mary, we will hear the reading and that will be interspersed by the song. For both the reading and the song, you're welcome to be seated. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen. I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you in the new kingdom of my father. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to them in reply, for all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be, Jesus said to them. Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep. 
for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus, Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they lay hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said, Have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. against you. But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I ordered you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? 
you have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, he deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him. Well, some slapped him, saying, Prophecy for us, Messiah, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. A little later the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them, even your speech gives you away. At that he began to curse and to swear, I do not know that the man, and immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, what is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests took the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and he questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, and so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus called Messiah? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. 
While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, called Messiah? They all said, Let him be crucified. Then he released Barabbas to them, but after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. We stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling for him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him off the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus the king of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourselves. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with their scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. For he said, I am the son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after the resurrection, <coughs> they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the man with him, who was keeping watch over Jesus, feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, Truly, this was the Son of God.
on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in a rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. Lord, we come to the cross. In your mercy, hear us. Bring healing and wholeness to people and nations, and have pity on those torn apart by division. Lord, we come to the cross. In your mercy, Strengthen all who are persecuted for your name's sake and deliver them from evil. Lord, we come to the cross. In your mercy, hear us. Look in mercy upon all who suffer and hear those who cry out in pain and desolation. Lord, we come to the cross. In your mercy, hear us. Bring comfort to the dying and gladden their hearts with the vision of your glory. Lord, we come to the cross. In your mercy, hear us. Give rest to the departed and bring them with your saints to glory everlasting. Lord, we come to the cross. In your mercy, hear us. Let us commend the world for which Christ died to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful, eternal God, 
You did not spare your own son, but gave him up for us all to bear our sins on the cross. Give our hearts such faith that we may never be frightened or despair. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's goodness and love, let us confess our sin and our need for God's forgiveness. Almighty God, long suffering and of great goodness, we confess to you, we confess with our whole hearts, our neglect and forgetfulness of your commandments, our wrongdoing, thinking and seeking, the hurts we have done to others, and the good we have left undone. O God, forgive us, for we have sinned against you, and raise us to newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you with the Holy Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share in his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We share a sign of peace with those sitting here too. Yes. And as we pe prepare to share in our Eucharistic feast, we sing together hymn number 66. And now, O oh Father, mindful of the love.
life. Bless us, and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you, and so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows, and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death, and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the body is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread. Communion in Christ's body is one program. 
Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. If we abide with him, we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall live with him. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
God, our help and strength. You have satisfied our hunger with this Eucharistic food. Strengthen our faith that through the death and resurrection of your Son, we may be led to salvation, for he is Lord now and forever. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, may the blessing of God who has guided us, Christ who has walked with us, and the Holy Spirit who has guarded us through this Lenten journey be upon you this holy week, that you may know the height and depth, the length and breadth, the nearness and the eternity of God's love for you. Amen. Amen. Before our final hymn, we, we have in the bulletin, I think in duplicate, a uh, list of the Holy Week services. The important thing to know is that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, each evening, uh, there is something happening here at St. John's at 7 o'clock. There's also the, uh, the ecumenical walk with the cross that's happening around town. You're welcome to any or all parts of that. There'll be a reception at Larch indoors at noon. And that is preceded by the Walk with the Cross with leadership from, uh, from several safe faith communities here in Wolfville, beginning 11 o'clock at Wolfville Baptist Church. Okay. Our final hymn today is number 386, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. <laughs> 